Hello and welcome to Brokenomics. Now, you guys remember Dr. Malik, don't you? I interviewed him on Brokenomics a few episodes back, and we talked about the NHS and the state of uh, well, the, the state of the NHS and what it did to itself over COVID and all that kind of thing. Anyway, so I then went on Dr. Malik's channel, and um, he interviewed me for a good two and a half hours. Now, I watched that and I thought that's really good. I mean. I mean, it has me on it, so I mean, obviously it's going to. Anyway, it's quite a long interview. It's about two and a half hours, so I, I apologise for the length. Um, come to think of it, that's something I used to have to say a lot in my 20s. But anyway, so it's a really good interview, and it, you get lots of me, and we talk about all sorts of things, um, health, economics, uh, a, whole, a whole bunch of different things. And I just thought the energy was quite good. It was all about, um, you know, my, my thoughts on things, but rather than me presenting, it was, it was somebody picking my brains on things and drawing ideas out. Anyway, so... Um, uh, Dr. Malik has very kindly agreed to let us put it out on Brokenomics. So enjoy this uh, bumper length episode of me being interviewed by Dr. Malik. Enjoy. Okay, everyone, I have an amazing guest with me here right now. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much, everyone, for your well wishes and um, all the love you've been sending me. Um, it's now. I think 19th December, 18th December, I can't remember. 19th, 19th. So this this will be coming out in about a couple of weeks' time. But some of you may have noticed I'm a lot chirpier. Um, I've been quite down recently. Um, and, you know, my career just fell apart. My mom got a heart attack two days ago. You know, I was pretty down. Um, but the good news is my mom has turned around and, you know, she's looking great. And hopefully we'll be get, able to get her home for Christmas. I'm overwhelmed by all the love you guys have been sending me and um, all the well wishes and prayers. And I think it's made a difference. So I just want to say thank you so much. Um, I also want to just take a few moments to thank all the people who've recently subscribed to my Substack and Spotify. So Karen Tinner, um, I love you. Um, um, who else have we got? We've also got um, Callie Girl, C. Lynn. Thank you so much. Um, I take it you're out in California. Um, I also want to say thank you to um, a few other people. Jay Mitchell, Jill, thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. And also to Lilibet. Thank you so much, folks. Um, I really appreciate all of your support. I can't be doing this without you guys. Now, let's move on to my guest, Dan Tubbs. So, Dan. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Yes. This is a bit weird now because I was on your podcast. You were. You were an excellent guest on Brokenomics. Uh, was it a few weeks back or something where we talked about the NHS? Okay, I, I um, need praise. I need I need my ego filled. So why was I an excellent guest? Well, I mean, <laughs> well, first of all, you confirmed everything that I thought about the NHS, which is nice to have your sort of opinions confirmed. But actually, what I what I really enjoyed about it was was actually more after. Because I did that whole thing where he's, oh, I got a doctor in front of me and we finished the podcast. So I'll, I'll start asking health questions as, as, as one does when one finds oneself in, in the presence of a doctor. Um, and, and I was actually coming at it from um, my daughter's got a number of health issues. I mean, she's very young, but she's got eczema and, and allergies and all that sort of stuff. And I, I just thought I'd pick your brains on that. And we then got into a whole conversation about diet and you gave me some great pointers and, and stuff like that. But you kind of warmed to your theme. Right, and then and then you started getting into it a bit more, and um, we we then got onto the sort of question of sort of diet, broader the question of diet and lifestyle and health and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have and, to make it clear this is all off air. This is yes on the way at the building. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but um, but I mean, you you really were warming to the theme to the point where uh, what. By the time we made it to the final door, you were, you were, you were in full lecture mode. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying this is a negative. I think I think I think it was excellent. And you know, the finger came out. And you know, just, just for those who are listening to this, I do cut a fine figure of a man. I will I will be honest about that. I don't want to be fact checked on that. But bit of a bit of a middle age podge going on. Right. Anyway, your finger came out and it started jabbing at the gut and it's like, do you want and you sort of give me these statistics about, you know, you've got a just just by being a, you know, a man in Western society, you've got like a 50% chance of getting heart disease. And do you want that? Do you want to be in that 50% uh, and you was and, and you were going with it? Right. Now I'm um, feeling a bit embarrassed now. No, no, it's good. It's good. I like it. Right. And um and, and for, I, I don't know what my facial reactions were, but you did comment on it. So, oh, your face right now. Right. Let me explain that, okay? Because that, for me, was not a negative. What I was actually thinking in my head while you were doing all of that is, why the hell don't doctors do this anymore? 
Why? Well, yeah. Because because this man is he's he's talking about the root causes. He's talking about lifestyle. You've missed something as well. You had a fizzy drink in your hand. You had a cold yeah. Can. I've I've got one in the car. I didn't dare bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a Coke Zero. I thought that's all right, but no, no. Apparently, apparently that's not all right. Anyway, so I'm sat here with a, I'm sat here with a chilled water because I didn't dare bring that into the the Malik residence. But uh, yeah, no, I thought it was brilliant, and yeah, and it, and it really set me down this process of thinking, why does this never happen anymore? Now, obviously, I go into the doctors, you know, from time to time with the daughters with her with her with her issues, and you know, whatever else comes up, you know, the other one stuff comes up from time to time, and I run a bit of A B testing on the doctors to when I go in. You know, sometimes I'll go in and I'll say, uh, well, I describe the problem and we've got whatever issue it is. And I'll ask something like, okay, so, so what's actually causing this then? You know, what's, what's at the root of this? What's triggering this? Yeah. And I always get some variation of, oh, I don't know. Right. And it's okay. Well, okay, fair enough. You don't know. But that for me poses a question. Why don't you know? I mean, things like eczema allergies, they're not new. Um, I sort of suspect that perhaps somewhere along the line somebody has figured this out and realised that it's cutting across, across some sort of incentive, uh, you know, money flows of some sort. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, and, and the other A-B testing I do is sometimes I go in and, I, and I'm just like, oh, okay, can you prescribe something? And they are so much happier when you go down that route. It's like, oh, yes, yes, I can. And they get their little book out and they, and they look it up and they, they write their prescription. They, they've got big smiles. I think, I, I tell you, I'll give you a prediction. I think that GPs won't be with us much longer. I think they're going to get replaced with Amazon. 100%. AI, 100%. Yes. It's going, they, they've done it to themselves. Oh, absolutely. You know, by locking themselves up. Yes. Tell the consultations only. You know, I, I mean, yeah. like, you know, only up until recently when I was still working, we'll go into that in a second, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting referrals and it's like, due to COVID measures, this consultation was, you know, done over the phone. And I'm yeah. like, excuse me, oh, how how are yeah. you meant to diagnose, examine someone, look at their foot? Do you really think <laughs> how's this working out? Yeah. It's nonsense. I, I, I am most definitely not playing the the violin for the for the for the GPs here. Um, you know, they, they, they will Amen. be thinking to themselves, well, look, we did the right thing. We we went through medical school, medical school, never asking questions, just simply learning what to prescribe. You know, we went for a whole career, never asking questions. You know, we we doled out the death jab and got fifteen pounds a shot for it, or what, whatever it is that they earned from it. You know, we were earning good money a few years ago. We went along with the narrative one hundred percent. And whenever we did have colleagues who spoke out and asked questions, you know, we stood idly by while they were drummed out of the uh, out of the practice. Or yeah, or they they piled on. All, all that, yes. Mate, they piled yes. on. And you should have seen the private Facebook messages. Oh, look at this quack. I mean, the, 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 yeah. the shit I got. He's questioning the narrative. Yeah. You know, the, the... He's an, a dangerous, he's reckless. And guess what? People like me got referred to the GMC. Do you know how many of my colleagues have referred me to the GMC? A lot. Yeah, I can imagine. What is that? Freaking. Yeah, it's crazy. And the reason I think, I mean, I, and you said it with AI. Um, I mean, a, a slight tangent here, but I'll just, I'll just point this out. Um, interesting thing happened with poker a few years back when um, people started playing online. And basically, you had people who played in the real game for a long time. But to play in the real game, you need to turn up somewhere, get comfortable, you know, shuffle the cards, do all that kind of thing. And the amount of hands that you would see in your career were obviously limited by that. And then when the internet age came along, people started playing online. Uh, players suddenly got to see many, many times more hands and therefore they, they got more experience and they got better. Mm. But you apply that to something like AI and, you know, uh, you know, being a GP, when Amazon re reveal their, their, their medical AI bot, it's going to be speaking to more patients in a single hour than a, than a GP who served for 40 years will have spoken to over their whole lifetime. Mm. And it will never forget anything. Mm. And it will spot patterns <clears throat> that a GP won't see. And then on top of that, you can get your and I, and I don't think that's optimal. The optimal is clearly sitting down with the, with the doctor with your sort of attitude, who takes the time to get to know you and speaks to you and gets into it and you know, knows your history and has been serving you for for twenty years or whatever it is. That's going to be the best outcome. But that's not what we've got. We're not judging it against that bar. We're judging it against the bar of somebody who turns up is not in the slightest bit interested and just wants to medicate you. So the AI bot is going to be able to do that probably a lot better. Can I interject? Yeah. By the way, I just want to say, I love your energy. Like you are the tsunami. You've just sat down. 
you're just so you're so different like you're a great host by yeah. the way when i was on your podcast you're you gave me so much time to talk mm. and i i could learn from you <laughs> oh i don't know I, I'm, I'm a newbie to this myself should I, should, I, should, I, should I go over a little bit of... Uh, no, very quickly. Oh. I just want to say, if you don't mind, very, very quickly, very, very quickly. So basically, you mentioned something I need to roll. You said, you know, why, yep, don't, doc- why don't doctors do this anymore? Yes. And I think you touched on one. One is they actually don't know. They don't know any better. They don't genuinely don't know. They've been indoctrinated. Here's a yeah. condition. Here's a tablet. I think the second point is they don't want that awkward conversation. Mm. They don't want to say to someone, "You need to lose weight." Yeah, they and they don't want to have they don't want to have that conversation that takes a long time. Yes, it takes time. You got five minutes, ten minutes per yep. consultation. Do you know what? Much easier to say, "Oh yeah, you know what? Your cholesterol's high. Here, take the statin." Yeah, and actually, instead of saying, "Oh, cholesterol's really important," by the way, it's like one of the major building blocks in your body. You almost need it for. Every cell, cognitive function, your immune system, every mm. hormone production, you need cholesterol. Actually, that's not the problem. What we need to do is blah, 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 and have a whole conversation. That's painful. Yeah. They don't want to do that. They, they used to do I remember in the 80s as a young lad, you, you did used to get a lot more of that. Yeah. And it's just kind of evaporated. 100%. The point I don't, and so, you know, you might, you might as well use the, uh, you know, the, the Amazon um, AI and then, and then the medicine will get dropped off by drone 100%. two hours later. The problem with the Amazon AI is that it's a computer. Two, so much of a diagnosis, so much of a relationship is that personal touch, that feel, non-verbal communication. I mean, what is it, 70% importance? You know, when you're communicating with someone, it's what's yeah. not said it's your body language. It's your demeanor. I mean, I, I sense the energy of people. I mean, the energy of coming off you is a freaking amazing right now. Thank like, you, like, sir. <laughs> um, that's what you need. And you need yeah. hands on someone's body. You need to feel, touch, move a joint, feel their tummy, take their temperature. Yeah. You know, all But, but that's, not, that's not happening now. It's not. So who's to blame? Yeah. I, I mean, I always get with this stuff. When it, I mean, I, I, do, I talk about technology stuff a fair bit, you know, innovation, because I mean, my thing's economics and, and the growth. Well, actually, it's the, it's the broken economic systems I tend to focus on more. But, you know, um, e- economic growth and innovation in the important part. So I end up talking about technology a lot. Um, and I'm quite looking forward to, like, you know, the, the Tesla robot butler folding my, my laundry and all the rest of the stuff. And people will, will always shoot back, well, I, I'd rather have a human butler. Well, yeah, so would I, but I don't have one now. So, <laughs> you know, you know I, and, and, I would, I, and if I'm going to have a GP who just looks something up in a book and prescribes it, well, I, I'll take the one that I can access in the middle of the night because my kid's screaming because he's got an earache. And then two hours later, a drone drops off the medicine rather than having to wait until the following morning, try and make a booking for two days' time. Mm. You know, they, they are going to get outcompeted. Now, the elite will still have what we described as the, as the perfect benchmark of a doctor. The rest of us aren't going to get that. Um, but at least it'll be an upgrade from where we are now because you don't have to deal with a sassy receptionist. So if there's any billionaires out there um, looking for an out-of-work orthopedic surgeon, <laughs> yeah, I'm here, man. I'm here. <laughs> Here's my- yeah, you, meant, you mentioned at the start that you're, you're feeling perky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is, is that because they've they finally booted you and it's like, it's like that thing where people with with waiting for cancer diagnoses, they actually cheer up once they find out they've got cancer because it's the not knowing that kills them. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> so basically, um, the thing is, I got kicked out by one hospital. Yeah. I got suspended by another hospital right. for posting a clip, a podcast, and saying it's taken out of context. I mean, it's just bullshit. Yeah. And. You know, you mentioned the fact it's got nothing to do with that clip. No, it, I mean, it doesn't. So, I mean, th- th- they had already made the decision they wanted you out and then they went shopping for an excuse. And they they just, okay, we scroll through social media for 30 minutes until we can find something to hang it on. And then, oh, what is that? I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it clearly isn't. It, it's, it's because you had the temerity to use your brain in a way that ran against the narrative and, and that cannot be accepted. <laughs> yes. So basically... You know, one year ago, 15th of December, I posted my first video on Twitter saying, what the heck is going on with these yeah. vaccines? <clears throat> I've been on social media. I've been on GB News, you know, early on the year against the mandates. But, you know, as soon as that was done, I put my head back down because I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> it was no. not about me, me, me. I just want to get on with my life. Yeah. You know, I just want to work two and a half days a week, exercise, yeah. have a simple life and get on with it, you know. Yes. But when I saw things going 
badly, I felt, you know, enough is enough. You know, I felt forced and compelled to speak up. So the only thing that's changed in the last year is I've become quite vocal about things that I see, the nonsense. Yeah. My clinical practice hasn't changed. I'm still got an impeccable record. Um, yes. So what's changed? So why am I in trouble? Why am I in trouble now with all these hospitals? Yes. And well, because you think and that, that cannot be allowed. Right, exactly. Yes. And the problem is what happens is it feels to me, <clears throat> imagine you're driving, you've just driven to see me, okay? Mm. And I'm sure you've been on the motorway at some point, the highway. Yes. Right? So imagine like you've been driving very, very safely. Yes. Sometimes you sped a little bit over the speed limit. Imagine, so. imagine you're now surrounded by four cop cars. To your left, your right, in front and behind. Yes. Guess what? The whole journey to my house, they are, they're surrounding you. They're not looking at anyone else. They're not looking at the other cars, multiple cars speeding, driving recklessly, the drunk driver. They're not looking at any of these people jabbing away. No, 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 no. They're, they're, all eyes are on you. Now, you are sticking to the speed limit. Tell me something. Would you not find that stressful? Oh, yeah, I'd imagine I would. Right? Now I'd imagine... imagine now imagine you went one mile over the speed limit yep. doo, 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 and you get pulled over, you get taken yep. to the jail, you get, you know, your fingerprints, you spend a night in the cell and then yep. they release you on bail. And then next time you go back in the road, the cop yep. cars are there again. How, how, how would you feel? The, the only slight issue with your analogy is the only person who does actually get four cop cars driving around them is Rishi Sunak. And it's, <laughs> it, and it's done for the precise reason so that he can speed and drive recklessly. And they, <laughs> they, they, they are there to shield him from, the, from you know, everybody else who might have an issue with that. Yeah. No, but what I'm trying to say is even if I'm not doing anything wrong, it just yeah. feels like I've always got them watching me like a hawk waiting for yep. me to step or out of line to trip yes. up and tell me something. Does, is there anyone out there who doesn't make mistakes? Oh yeah. I make quite a lot. I mean, I, I make quite well, a lot. I enjoy a good number of them, but yes, <laughs> make, make them all the time. I make them all the time. Is there anyone who doesn't say stupid things occasionally and, and regrets yes. it? I do. I say yes. stupid, dumb shit all the time, you know? Yeah. So, but the thing is when you're an, under this kind of scrutiny, they don't give you any allowance for that. You're meant to be absolutely perfect, absolutely squeaky clean. And if you frack up even the smallest amount, oh, mate, they're coming for you. And then you know what? The punishment is a process. So that's oh, second. Yes, absolutely. So the is. second hospital that said, oh, we're going to start an investigation now. We suspended you. Suspended you. Right. I wrote back saying, stuff your suspension, HCA, Princess Grace Hospital. I'm not playing by your rules. Yeah. If you're going to treat me like this, I want nothing to do with you. Yes. Frack off. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Well, that, that's why I'm relatively relaxed about our incoming AI robot overlords because, you know, a, a, again, it's not optimal. But is it is it worse than what we got at the moment? A bunch <laughs> of petty ideologues, um, you know, driven by their their personal agendas and their desperate need to be part of the herd and all the rest of it. I mean, yeah. It, I mean, it. I mean, it, it definitely could be quite awful and term, Terminator esque, but. <laughs> Um, I don't know, median case scenario, it, it might not actually be that bad. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But, but you're out of that and you're you're doing this. Is this your full-time thing now? Y yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> I know, I need to up my game. So basically... I think your game is pretty good. How, how much does it cost to subscribe to the to the Doc Malik show? Um, so four ninety nine on Spotify and okay. £5.50 on Substack. So right. a coffee a month. Yes. So quick quick message to the listening audience. Go and subscribe. Oh thanks, man. I mean God, if if you if you wanted to buy a pint in a pub, how much change are you getting from five pounds? You're not your your that five pounds is not a material difference at this point. But if thirty percent of you listening to this think, yeah, actually, yeah, why not? Let's support. It is important. You know what the, yeah. the I don't know about what it's like brokenomics and you know, lotus eaters is part yeah of, you know, the Brookonomics family. I mean, it's amazing what you guys have created, and you should talk about that in a second. Yeah. But, you know, and the diversity is quite amazing, and your subscription model and how you got punished by YouTube. So <clears throat> so basically, um, for me, I, I have to thank all the listeners who are out in America, Canada, and Australia, because although they make up, you know, the, the minority of listeners, something like 30 40%, they're like 80% of my is it, Yeah, it's exactly the same with I, us. So I just want to say thank you to all those people out there. I love you guys so much. Yeah, it's exactly the same with us. Um, our, our subscriptions are about a third US, a third UK, and a third the rest of the world. But the Americans do make up the bulk of um, you know, the, the paying subscribers. So, yeah, it's great people. Yeah. So, so come on, Brits, up your game. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Try this amount of coffee. So, but, but I mean, to your, to your broad point, I mean, we're kind of in at that point where you kind of can have free speech, but it's very expensive. Very, very expensive. Explain what you mean by that. Well, I mean, obviously, in your case, you know, uh, the cost of having free speech is yeah. the absence of a, of a medical career. Yeah. Um, in my case, um, I mean, my, my situation is, is, is slightly different. I mean, I'd worked in finance for a long time in venture capital and, 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 a, and a few other things, um, sort of a periphery of that. In, what was it, like 20, 2018 or something, the fund that I was working on was wrapping up. These things tend to be a 10-year fund. Um, I had small children. I wanted to get out of London because, well, Smart. obviously, yeah. get out of London. Yeah, yeah. So, so I moved to a nicer part of the world. And, you know, I, I wasn't retired, but I was sort of in that position where I could, I could pick something that was perhaps a bit more interesting. So I was having a bit of a lull. And um, then COVID came along. And actually... Financially speaking, COVID was one of the best things that ever happened to me. The reason is because uh, there were a lot of agendas going on over there, a lot of agendas. But I was very in tune with the financial side of things. And very early on in the pandemic, they started um, basically pumping liquidity into the system. So you know, effectively money printing. And it was at such a huge rate. It was so disproportionate. And the excuse given for it, I mean, and, and it was in the first few weeks as well, mm. of when they started doing the, the lockdown <clears throat> process. I just thought, this is, this is so completely out of line. But I knew what that injection of liquidity was going to do. I mean, for people interested, it was, going to, it, was, it was going to be rotated into financial assets. And the financial assets that are going to respond the most were going to be things like crypto and long-duration tech, because uh, they have the... Um, the highest response to to a big injection of liquidity. So, sorry, just stop one second. So, a simple guy like me, liquidity means money. Are we talking about money in the sense that yeah. you know the government bought bonds or the this quantitative easing or the furlough? The what, what was it? I mean, the, what do you the mean by way liquidity? To describe it is is just to say there was a lot of money printing. Purists will then uh, you know pick me up and say oh, it wasn't money printing; it was injection of liquidity because you know blah 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 blah, and they're buying government bonds and all the rest of it and. But, but, but you are creating extra numbers. You're increasing yeah, the money supply. The, the, the amount of money that is washing around the system exactly. goes up. So the money supply is Money printing because for the sake of that. So I knew what it was going to do. And um, I then um, basically positioned accordingly and started ringing up all my friends and family and saying, you've got to get into the market. This is the best financial conditions, risk assets that I've ever seen. But of course, everybody thought I was completely bonkers. What do you mean risk assets? Um Oh, um, stuff that can go up and down. So stock shares, bonds, um, well, not bonds, but um, crypto, all that sort of stuff. So you're saying buy then? Yeah, big Bitcoin and, you know, tech stocks, that kind of stuff. Dude, where were you in my life when I needed it? Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, the, the problem is, is, is I couldn't convince anyone because every, everyone thought I was completely mad because the news... But that's because you're talking to your family. Yeah. Dude, no one listens to me either. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the doctor when it's, whenever there's a medical problem, I'm like, no one listens to me. It's like, weird, isn't it? Right? Like, so I've like just, I, you know, I told my mom not to take statins. I've spoken to so many scientists and doctors, don't, statins don't work. It's all blah, blah. And it's like, the doctors, when my mom had a heart attack, were like, oh, that the she should have been on statins. Now she needs to be four times that dose. And everyone's looking at me going, it's your fault. And I'm turning around to them saying, no, those doctors don't know Jack. It's not the statins. that It's lots of other yeah. factors. Maybe the fact she was jabbed twice. You know, God knows what else. So not in a medical sense, but I am, I am very familiar with this dynamic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so ev everybody basically told me to, 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 to no, don't do that. Um, 18 months later, when the, when the rewards came in, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe we should have listened to you after all. Okay, so next time, Dan, you want to give advice to your family, just speed dial me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll do that. I think we might have another big liquidity event coming up. We can we can get onto that later on. But okay. but yeah. Anyway, so so there I was, and 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 I was doing, and, and I think actually for the vast like ninety nine percent of people, the way they judged the pandemic was how did they personally do out of it? Shit. So the lap. So that well, yeah. But you I say that. Shit. But the laptop class, they bloody loved it. Yeah, but not me because yes. I was locked out of a hostel. I'm yes. full time private. I'm not eligible to furlough. Yes. I'm not getting paid by the NHS, and I'm staying in my garden for like yeah. six months. But you have a lot of bureaucrats who were, you know, turning up to an office job that they hate, and now they got to sit at home watching oh, they Netflix loved it. on their no, Netflix, 100%. On, their, on their laptop. Hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent, yeah. yeah. And, and, and really, the vast majority of people, it is as simple as that. Did I enjoy lockdowns, or did I 
not. Mm. And, and that and that and that that comes down to the to their assessment of where it comes. So I'm actually a little bit weird in it that that uh, that whole process was absolutely fantastic for me because I could see the machinations that were going on on the lower levels and then could position myself to, to, to do nicely from that. But all the same, I was so utterly, utterly affronted by, I, I, I will choose my words. Um, in fact, I, I will just skip that. You know, the words I want to use about, Sit. about this whole process. Sit. I was just oh, treacherous, villainous, um, incompetent. I mean, it was it was just awful uh, at every stage. The affront on our liberties, the the way that the government um, thought that it had the right to treat us. Um, you know, the way that the media responded to us. You know, the way we were tr- treated like idiot children, and we had to be corralled. And I, I just, I just I, it was just such an affront to me mm. that I, I just couldn't stop myself speaking out. So I, I had a. I had a low profile before that. I mean, I was just doing my thing, thinking about, okay, you know, what, what's the next gig going to be? You know, what, what can I get involved in that's interested? And I was certainly aware that when I started speaking out as strongly as I did, that I was, I was closing an awful lot of doors when I did that. But I just couldn't help myself. And, and I, just, I just came to the view that it was, it was a price worth paying because I, I could not live with myself if I didn't speak out against it. So then I started speaking out against it. And I, and, I mean, I spoke about all of the things that people in our sphere were talking about at the time. Mm. But I tended, of course, to have a bit of a lean to the financial side. And I, I, I did you know, various explainers on Twitter as to you know, what, what's going on behind this. And then when you start doing that, you start getting requests for for interviews all over the place and and before long i just found oh hang on i didn't quite like the sound of my voice that's that's good and i think everyone has the ha, everyone has the right to my opinion so i i kind of did more and more of that um and then eventually i ended up tying up with as you alluded to um the lotus eaters which is a big um i, I suppose I, I, at, at a time we would have been called alt right. I mean, we're, we're more the sort of sensible centre of the country, really. That's that's where we are. But it, it is it is the largest sort of um, non leftist um, media outlet in, in, in the country. But it's completely sort of cut off, of course, from the, the mainstream sources. You know, we, we won't be interviewed on. Well, I don't think we'd want to be um, on any of the mainstream sources. You know, we get continually harassed by YouTube. We got demonetized. They couldn't actually find a reason to demonetize us. Um, but they, um, well, what did they pick in the end? We, we didn't break any of the terms of service. So eventually they just said, you are associating with people who we don't like. And therefore, therefore you, you can go. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, they, they, they always find it once they've decided that they don't like your politics. Yes. It's just a question <laughs> of how they, how they, you know, plunge the knife, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So basically what happened to free speech? Look, dude, I grew up in the eighties and it was a bad Russians and then 90s and 2000s it was a bad Chinese and they censor and they're horrible yeah we do yeah we censor all the fracking time do you remember you could win an argument in the 80s well not win an argument but you could end an argument in the 80s by saying something along the lines of oh well, it, well it's a free country or something like that or you know you know that, that, that's your opinion yeah, yeah. nobody says that anymore no, 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 nobody's under the impression it's a free country where you can just go around and, and say what you think and, and whatever so I got, I've got punished by YouTube so I haven't even yeah, posted okay. anything recently. They took off two of my videos. They gave me a strike for a video on homeopathy. And then I didn't do anything for a while. And then suddenly out of the blue, it came, you know, you've, you, because of your whatever content, you've breached community guidelines and you're, yeah. you're downgraded. And so someone was saying to me, oh, you need to do more videos on YouTube and just have... It's because met- you're on a watch list. That you, you're on a, on a list of people that... Let's find a way to harass and, and, and sideline this person. So, which is why, before we started recording, the first thing I asked you is, is, is this going out on YouTube? Because if it was, I'd have to, I'd have to self-censor. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Yeah. No, don't worry. Because I, I want to be respectful of your part. I don't want to get you thrown off anything. But as soon as you said, oh, no, I'm not on YouTube. So, like, okay, excellent. I can say what I want then. So the reason why, look, someone close to me, a friend, Sean is like, oh, you need to do what Eric Berg is doing. And he's got 12 million followers on YouTube and just do health advice and health content. Yeah, but no, I don't want to. And I'll tell you why. Because one is a platform that doesn't respect free speech. So I don't want to work with them. Two, you spend all this time and energy investing and building something that they can literally demolish overnight because you know what? They don't like you. And I don't want that. 
I don't want to be tiptoeing around anyone. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be canceled by anyone. I've already been canceled left, right and center. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to be cancelable. If that is that, if that's a word, like just, if you don't like me, I don't like you either. Yeah. It's just like that hospital princess grace. You clearly don't like me. Well, frack you. I don't like you either. You yeah. know what? And yes, it's scary and it's lonely and it might be uncertain times ahead financially. And, you know, I'm really watching the bank balance like, oh my God, what the frack? You know, where can I get money from? Um, but I'd rather build something that's more secure than build something that overnight again, they can just knock it all down because yeah. that's exhausting. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is a harder road going on the non YouTube route because it's such a big funnel. But if you do use it, it has to be, you have to perceive it purely as a as a funnel as a way to sort of direct people to you and then people who are listening need to sign up on dr.malik.com whatever it is yeah, but i think we should i don't even think like my philosophy is whether it's food so take for example all these fizzy drinks you know and fast food joints and these big tech youtube whatever don't give your money or time or energy to these organizations that are not interested in our health or our freedom. Yep. Does that make sense? So it's, it's, it's boycott. It's, it's yeah, but it's really hard not to because they are always the path of least resistance. It is, it is always the easy option. If you're driving on the motorway for seven hours and, and you're getting hungry. Convenience yep. is not convenient for your health. Yes. People just need to get yeah. used to this. We've become fat, lazy, and as a result, also stupid. You know, we need to stop it. We need to reverse it. You know, you were saying, oh, you know, this, the robot ironing. I, I don't want that. You know, I, I, oh, hate... I definitely want one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want, I don't like it when on the, on the boot of a car, there's a button and, the, or you press it on your key and the, and the boot opens yeah. and closes. We need to start using our muscles and be functional and do things and be active. Like you, yes. we can't just have everything done for us. Otherwise we will become Wally. Well, we need to take a bit of time back because, I mean, you know, the other thing that you were talking to me after after our podcast was about, you know, eating better and, and taking the time to prepare. And I, and I was pretty, I actually, I was pretty good at that because I'd taken back time um, so I, I could do proper cooking. And things when you do proper cooking, it, it does take longer and there is more like, involved did you, in it. Did you take the McDonald's out of the packet and heat it up properly in the oven? Like, <laughs> is that what you meant? It's like... No, I'm mean, getting getting like proper locally grown. I mean, I've, I've, I've subscribed to some service where they deliver a whole box of vegetables every week and you know, oh. take the time to to prep it and do the thing. And I'm so impressed. On. Yeah, you 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 got to go down there, but it, it it is it is worth it. And a lot of the time, we're just so much in the rat run of, um, you know, I've got a bit of disposable income. What do I do? I buy a new car. And I've got I've got a decent amount of disposable income i'll buy a bigger house and then i'll be a slave to my mortgage and then i've mm. got to i've got to make the payments and i've i've, I've got to keep pedaling that wheel um and and i just took the view of well do i well I, actually i do need a faster car i, I, I want i want to get i want to get one of those teslas that take off like a rocket but anyway i'll get that <laughs> right and, and then and then i'll be of the view that i don't need a faster car and a bigger house you know you, I, the, the time is actually far more valuable time is far far more valuable so anyway, so then I got into... Uh, oh, by the way, can I quickly just oh, say yes, go on. Uh, you just made me think about, you know, food boxes. Yeah. So just before you came, actually, uh, the door rang and I thought it was you. Right. Um, I just want to shout out to Julie Ratcliffe, um, former patient of mine. Um, the box of meat has arrived. God bless Fantastic. you. Lovely Christmas present. I love you so much. I mean, there's so many lovely people out there. So shout out to Julie. Um, and God bless you. And what a fantastic Christmas present. A big box of meat. Mate, big box of meat. Yes. <laughs> that is superb. I, I actually just did a podcast on the economic inefficiency of Christmas. Um, because, I mean, the way the way it's supposed to... I mean, this is a complete tangent, but I mean, might as well, might as well go down it now. But um, the way that purchases are supposed to work is they're supposed to add more value um, than the price of a thing. So to go back to my my earlier example, if you've got a, a kid screaming at three in because they got an ear infection, you know how much would you actually pay for that little bottle of medicine? You know, you'd you'd, you'd pay hundreds of pounds for it. What you actually pay is like eight pounds or something. To, you know, put those drops in. That's normally the way it works with all purchases. With Christmas presents and, and studies have been done. Joel Wolfuk did a did a study on 1991 on this, where he basically found that um, if if you looked at the the presents that people had received. And then ask them, okay, how much would I have to pay you to part with them? Um, the values were coming up about a third less than was actually paid on them. Oh, wow. So, so Christmas is a, is a net destruction of economic value of of about a third. Oh, wow. Well, this year's 
we've been quite good. So um, I'm getting a pair of training shoes because yeah. my ones have got holes in them, and my wife is getting a pair of training okay. shoes because she's got holes in them. Yeah, but that okay. So, so that's, that's that's the other issue because it's your wife buying it. She has more information on you. So so the closer the relationship, the um, you you can actually create value when mm. it's when it's a close relationship. When it's like your your aunt or uncle or cousin or in-laws or something and they don't have a damn clue what's about but you know what it's even worse right um you know pakistanis and weddings dude it's hilarious <laughs> it's hilarious <laughs> let me explain let me explain so like i would i would have like or or even any kind of gift like you know i don't know why it's honestly this is true i had this doctor you know um say oh my god thank you so much for helping me pass the exam you you know you coached me and trained me for years and you know, helped me. I'm so grateful. I went, oh, that's nice. Please, please, please. I want to give you a present. I went, no, no, you don't need to. No, no, I want to give you a present. Oh, I went, no. no, no, I want, I want to give you this present. And I went, okay. And then he brings in at work this bag and, and he goes, and I was embarrassed and I was like, okay. And I put it underneath the desk, carried on with the consultation and finished my day's work and pick up the bag. Right. So I open up the bag. There's a size 17 yellow bright shirt. That's clearly a present from someone. I'm 15 <laughs> and collar size. So it's this 17 yeah. billowing shirt, bright yellow. Yeah. No, no, I don't want that. There was a fake cheap aftershave. Yeah. There were some plastic. Well, I hope he's not listening to this. There were some plastic flowers and a box of chocolates that were six months out of date. Yes. And I'm just like, you know what you need to do? You need to find someone. What's a frat? Like, really, really. Who does that? Do, do you get, do you get people giving you presents like that? Yeah, every so often. Like, what am I meant to do with this? I, I, I don't have the UK numbers, but the Americans, they throw away 20 billion worth of presents every year, every Christmas. What? Yeah. 20 yes. billion? Yes, worth of presents. Goes in the bin. Can you just imagine that as a mountain? Can you imagine the mountain of presents, yes. of waste? Yeah. Oh my God, I feel sick. But it's, 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 not, it's not just Christmas, I do. It's... Um, so. so once I got with Lotus Eaters, I, I I had this idea of doing this series called Brokenomics, which is kind of play on economics being broken. But it, it's it's kind of more than just the economic side of things. It's the it's broken systems as a whole. Um, and Did then, you had me on? So yeah, well, covering everything. Yes, well, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the, I mean, the central thrust of it was was the broken NHS. Mm, it's um, broken. It's broken, man. Yeah, but I I have discovered that it is a target rich environment. There is always something that I can find to talk about. Um, and uh, what you mean as in like broken? Yeah, broken or, systems. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah, everything is broken. Yes, I mean you could actually change your name podcast to the Upside Down World podcast because also yes. everything is upside down. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean so many broken incentive structures, systems. It's it's it, it's kind of time for a good reset of some sort. Careful, Klaus. Yes. Careful. Klaus. Well, I, I think I think people misunderstand the Great Reset. You know that that has been a talking point in our sphere for a long time, and a lot of people default to saying, "Oh, they want to destroy the economy to take control of everything." I don't think that's what's happening at all. What is it? I, I think what what they realise is that <clears throat> the financial system we have is is teetering on the precipice, mm. and it is going to crash anyway. I mean, it is being held together by duct tape at this point. It should have gone in 2008 mm. um they're holding it together and I, I can give you if you like to to the processes that they're going at the moment i mean the well the lockdown yeah. was part of that process it, yeah, was, it was pumping that liquidity in 100 percent. i've talked uh, about this by the way yeah oh, I'm, oh yeah i'm sure you have i mean it, 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 i don't know what the doctor equivalent is but maybe it's something like the statins where somebody's got a serious problem the symptoms are manifesting and then rather than dealing with the underlying cause they're just giving them some sort of boost that that masks the symptoms for long enough to get them for another few years. That's that's essentially where the. I, I'll, the I'll, I'll give you an analogy. Yeah, I on. think this is an analogy. So someone's got a cough and a sniffle and a flu, and instead of like going right, listen, mate, you need to lose weight, go to sleep properly, take some vitamin D, vitamin C, yep. cut out the carp, crab, processed food. They've gone come into hospital and we'll intubate you. We'll keep you on life support for the next ten years. Yep. Oh, that's that's all they're doing with the it's economy. Just, it's like a zombie state. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Not actually fixing the root cause. Yeah. So I, I think what the what the Great re Reset really is, it is a set of policies being put in place so that when this reset comes, the people who are rich and powerful No, sorry, now, when this crash comes. When this, when this crash comes, yeah. 
the people who are rich and powerful now get to also be rich and powerful on the other side of it. Mm. Historically, ha- that hasn't happened. There, there's been a whole number of historical incidents where um, the system has failed spectacularly, and it tends to lead to a change in it, it wipes out the capital structure, and new elites emerge on the other side of it. I'd like to be that. Can I be the new elite? Well, not if Klaus has anything to do about it, because they they want to make sure that all of the all of the mechanisms are in place, so that when the capital structure is destroyed, the alternative is is theirs. But that's the whole digital currency, isn't it? So yeah. that you know the the fiat money, the paperless garbage that we've got now goes, and then instead it's this social credit system and control mechanism. Yeah, I mean, if you zoom out, it's a three part <laughs> act, really. So the, the criminal classes um, have, have been working on this one for a long time. The, the first act was the central. Who's, banks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's a criminal cl- class? Oh, uh, people who go to Davos. I mean that 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 sort of thing. Okay, um, particularly the people. Who, Remember, we're not on YouTube, so sorry. Yes, particularly the people the backroom passes. I, I think I think I I I don't particularly see um, national politicians like the Sunaks and the Keir Starmers as as really being that important they're puppets yeah exactly i, th- I think that they're i think actors. they're downstream of the real power yeah yeah, yeah 100%. the national governments are policy implementers they're have not you heard policy them speak deciders. they don't even like they oh can't, yeah can't even string proper sentence together well it's because they don't they don't they don't have a genuine understanding of the root of what it is that they're saying they're just repeating platitudes mm. well actually we saw this didn't we we saw this fantastically clearly during the um um the, the the parliamentary COVID questions that they did afterwards. Do you remember when they got Matt Hancock in and um, who was the other one? Oh, Dominic. They, they got a whole bunch of them, Dominic Cummings and a whole bunch of other ones. What we learnt during that is that the sort of things that we had been saying during the lockdown proved to be true because, you know, they, we were talking about how Bill Gates is behind this, behind this kind of thing. Mm. It turns out that Matt Hancock was on the phone to Bill Gates' people almost every day. Right, now, the reason that happens is because national politicians are too busy reacting to headlines and running around and you know managing the message. What they don't do and what they haven't done for a very long time is is do the do the deep thinking as to what the set of policies should be. Mm. Um, take the time to understand it, do the deep intellectual work, and then uh, run on a program of this is what we're going to implement, get into power and, and implement that. You know, it has been a long time um, mm. since that has been the case. And you can actually see that manifest very clearly in the US with um, who's actually writing the legislation. So back in the sort of 50s and 60s, it would have been the congressman. By the time you get into the 70s and 80s, it's the congressman staff. And these days, it is lobbyists. It is. It is the big companies. Corporations. Are, yes, yeah. they they are handing over the bills in in <clears> incomplete form, and they're effectively rubber stamping it. And, and then it and the, and it's funny how things get passed through um, over the Christmas period, bundled up with lots of different topics and and things, and within it, a tiny piece of information will be about arms funding or whatever. So who's got the time to sift through thousands of pages and pick up all, it, no one. And often these bills are presented like five minutes before you need to vote on them. That's what I'm trying to say. It's even and, worse in the EU. And then they but, get and they get whips. And the whips yes. are told you will vote along this line. And the politician yeah. goes, okay, I mean someone recently said to me, Oh, you should, you should you should become an independent politician. I was like, what the hell? No thanks. Yeah, the, sy- the system will shut you out. The system get anywhere near it. Like yeah. like what? Like as if I've got any power, any say, and then it's again you're going back into their court, yeah. where they're going to legitimizing their system, legitimizing their system, and they will destroy you, they will discredit you, they'll mock you, they'll you know, there's yeah. just no point. I'm not wasting my energy there. But listen, you were talking about three, the criminal class. And, oh yes, yes. Get back into so, that. Get back so into the, that. F- the first act was the central banks, in whatever it was, like 1913 or whenever it was, and then the second act would have been fiat currency. So, you know, we, we've skipped along to the, the 70s. Now. Whenever I talk about this stuff, I tend to default to the to the US because even though the timings are slightly different with the UK, I mean, we've, we've been on a on a short leash um, from the US uh, for quite a long time. So so whenever you hear me talking about financial stuff and you think my dates are wrong, it's, it's because I'm defaulting to, to, to the US. But anyway, so 1913 for the central banks, then you've got um, the early 70s for the, the flip from gold um, over to fiat currency. And of course, the third act is going to be the central bank digital currencies. Once they've got that, I mean, they, they've already got an enormous amount of control um, over everything we do from the from the control of the money, the money system. And, you know, we sometimes think, OK, well, thank goodness we're not living in a communist country. 
where the government controls um, everything that we do. Yeah, but half of every transaction is money, and they control the money. I mean, you try doing anything without having money involved, and they and they control that to a to a huge degree, hundred percent. And they can manipulate it as they want to. So, actually, let, let, let me let me throw in something something that might possibly be useful. You know, caveats, caveats, not not financial advice and all that kind of thing. I think since two thousand eight, the system has been so broken, the debt has got so out of control. So, put some numbers around this. Basically, in in Western economies, the debt is the same size as the the economy itself the debt to gdp ratio is 100 percent. now that's quite helpful for our purposes because you can you can then look at it very simply and say okay well if, if both are the same size which is growing faster mm. is it the debt or the economy mm. the answer is it's the debt to watch the full video please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com